Hello, I'm Dorothy Saldura, a fourth year nutrition and dietetics student from Cebu Doctors University. Today, I will be presenting a short video lecture on one of the four major forms of malnutrition, which is stunting. By the end of this video, you will be able to briefly define stunting and determine its comparison to other forms of malnutrition, to recognize the risk factors and causes of stunting, to be aware of the global impact and the Philippine statistics relating to stunting, to examine the consequences and the effects of stunting among children, and to recommend nutritional interventions for stunting prevention. A brief definition. Malnutrition refers to deficiencies, excesses, or imbalances in a person's intake of energy and or nutrients. The term malnutrition addresses four broad groups of conditions under nutrition, which includes stunting or low height for age, wasting or low weight for height, underweight or low weight for age, and obesity, which means one is having excessive amount of body fat than normal. This means that malnutrition is multifaceted. In this discussion, we will be focusing particularly on stunting. So, what is stunting? Stunting or being too short for one's age indicates undernutrition in a child who is not receiving enough nutrition to grow and develop to reach his or her full potential. It is a condition of impaired growth and development caused by poor maternal nutrition, inadequate infant and young child feeding practices such as inadequate exclusive breastfeeding initiation and complementary feeding, repeated infection which may be due to unsanitary conditions and food preparation, especially in low-income areas, inadequate psychosocial stimulation or opportunities to exercise, play, and learn. Stunted children are classified so by the World Health Organization or WHO growth chart when a child's height for age is more than two standard deviations from the median. This means that the children are below average in the normal growth range of children in their same age bracket. In 2019, globally, 144 million under the age of 5 were classified as stunted with a prevalence rate of 21.3%. In the Philippines, one out of three Filipino children below the age of five are stunted, which accounts to 3.5 to 4 million affected children nationwide. This is classified as high in magnitude and severity according to WHO standards. As provided by the Expanded Philippine National Nutrition Survey or the ENNS 2018, stunting prevalence increased from 32.6% in 2015 to 36.6% in 2018, a 0.4 increase which is alarming because the 2012 World Health Assembly set a global target to reduce the number of stunted children by 40% in the year 2025. This means that a lot has yet to be done to ensure that the Philippines reduces the number of stunted children in the coming years. Scientific evidence has shown that stunting in early life, especially in the child's first 1,000 days, from conception until the age of 2, has negative consequences for the child's physical and mental development. Stunted children are faced with multiple risks and affect their overall quality of life. These include poor cognition or reduced learning capacity and educational performance, which in turn results to low adult wages and less income, less productivity, and when accompanied by excessive weight gain later on in childhood, an increased risk of nutrition-related chronic diseases in adult life. All of this also affects one's emotional stability and overall morale. More alarmingly, 
Severe stunting, if not addressed, attributes to death over 1 million children per year, according to a study conducted in 2018 by Miat et al. It is very important to note that stunting cannot be cured, but it can be prevented. The next question is, how do we do that? The answer to that is proper nutrition in the first 1,000 days. The first 1,000 days is described as the period from conception to a child's first two years of life and is considered the golden window of opportunity for a child to achieve his or her full potential in the aspect of development. This is the period during which key health, nutrition, early education, and Related services should be delivered to ensure the optimum physical and mental development of a child. Maintaining good nutrition and a healthy diet during pregnancy is critical for the health of the mother and the unborn child. A healthy diet during pregnancy contains adequate energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals obtained through the consumption of a variety of foods including rice, root crops, cereals, green and orange vegetables, meat, fish, beans, nuts, pasteurized dairy products, and fruits that are rich sources of folic acid, calcium, and vitamin D, which are necessary to support the nutrient needs of the mother and her baby's development. The World Health Organization recommends mothers worldwide to exclusively breastfeed infants for the first six months to achieve optimal growth, development, and health. Breastfeeding, the main source of active and passive immunity in the vulnerable early months and years of life, is considered to be the most effective preventive means of reducing the death rate of children under 5. Complementary feeding is defined as the process starting when the breast milk alone is no longer sufficient to meet the nutritional requirements of infants, and therefore other foods and liquids are needed along with the breast milk. Start at 6 months of age with small amounts of food and increase the quantity as the child gets older, while maintaining frequent breastfeeding. The energy needs from complementary foods for infants with average breast milk intake in developing countries are approximately 200 kilocalories per day at 6 to 8 months of age, 300 kilocalories per day at 9 to 11 months of age, and 550 kilocalories per day at 12 to 23 months of age. In summary, stunting is defined as impaired growth in comparison to a child's age. One out of three children in the Philippines are stunted, and over one million die of stunting globally each year. Stunting cannot be cured, but it can be prevented. The first 1,000 days of a child's life is the most vital window to address childhood stunting. So what now? Exclusive breastfeeding from birth to six months and complementary feeding from six months up to two years should be promoted to prevent stunting and to promote the child's optimal growth and development. For references and further reading on the subject, here are the sources I used for this lesson. Once again, this has been Dorothy Saldura and I hope you learned useful information from today's short lesson. May we always value life and promote high-quality nutrition to build a healthy generation. Thank you.